How old do you have to be to purchase a handgun from a licensed dealer in the state of Michigan? A handgun from a licensed dealer, you would need to be 21 years of age. How long do you have to be to buy a long rifle from a licensed dealer in the state of Michigan? From a licensed dealer, you can buy a long gun, that is a shotgun or a rifle, at 18 years of age. Can you own a gun if you're a crazy person? If you're a crazy person, I would hope that you would not have a gun, but crazy people are crazy. No bullshit. No bullshit. Snap, crack, pop. Just fuck around. Yeah, welcome to it. The place where smart people go. The no BS news are high, Karen. The lower level, Charlie. Look at that. Back in the dungeon. That's awesome. Queen of the scene is back on the street. Hey, Charlie. And Grace and Mark and Jesus, <laughs> we're all here. Jesus hit me. Okay, listen. Um, we just What we did... In the midst of the show, the highlight of the show this week will be uh, a one-on-one -on -one with Tudor Dixon, right? Mm -hmm. A 20-minute talk. Uh, she is a uh, Republican candidate for governor. Uh, next week, we'll have Rinky, another candidate. And for Saldano and Kelly supporters, hey, look here. You want on? Your campaign's got to call us. We're not begging nobody, yep. right? Dixon's people ask. Rinky's people ask. That's right? We would like to be fair, but I'll be damned, Karen, if we're begging people yeah, to return right. our calls. You shouldn't do that, Charlie. And and to me, and, and we were talking about this before, I'm, I'm kind of disappointed that elected officials feel like they have the audacity to say no. I mean, because they're saying no to the people that put them in office. They're not being accessible, and as a result, they're not being accountable. Yeah. Oh we'll, oh, we'll get to that. Okay. And all the blowjob news stories going around. You're not helping us. Blowjob. Oh, BJ, sorry. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> um, also, so, at, you know, after interviewing Tudor uh, Dixon, we were talking about gun laws. And, like, you know, how, uh, now everybody's doing it. The li little tricky stuff about... Um, you know, local media will do about, you know, all the mass shootings. Right. Like about uh, uh, semi-automatic rifles and stuff. Uh, by the way, of which, that's the Supreme Court. There are federal gun laws. The, 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 the governor just doesn't make up laws. And it's not a gun store either. Right. Well, see, and that's the thing. I don't think many of these candidates, even the gun owners, know what the laws are in this state or where we rank in terms of how onerous it is. We're in the top 20 states of being tough to get a, you know, a, a, a gun. Mm -hmm. California being one, Michigan being 19. So it's worth knowing. So we asked Red to do that okay. with Rick Actor. Uh, oh, let me do this before I forget. Uh, of Legally Armed uh, in Detroit, that's Rick Actor. And he's going to, ladies, have a free class, free demonstration, and free shooting lessons uh, on, I believe it's July... Do you know, Karen? No, I just heard you say it and I forgot. I'm yeah, sorry. Here we go. We'll find out. I, I, I got it right here. Let me... Rick's a, Rick knows his stuff, too. He does. July 30th and Sunday, July 31st, Legally Armed in Detroit will be providing women a free range briefing and a free shooting lesson. Registration starts Saturday, July 23rd at 8 a.m. For more info, go to Facebook.com slash Michigan CCW. Yep. Okay? I think every woman should have one. Oh. Seriously. I know, I know, I know a, lot, a lot of women. But but you have to with with that right comes a responsibility. Yes. You, you got to know what you're doing. You know. I mean, it's not for if you get upset because somebody cuts you off. It's not. I mean, there are laws to follow. There are morality laws to follow, and you need to you need to know. Yeah. Okay. Now let me just take care of a little business. Speaking right of morality, ahead. right? <laughs> this is the time of year if you're turning 65, you're about ready to get on Medicare. Mm -hmm. If you're already on Medicare, you also have a window once a year to change your providers and your plan and your prescriptions and all that. If anybody calls you, not only is it immoral, it's illegal, right? They cannot solicit you over Medicare. That's the law. So I'm telling you, 
do your parents a favor or do yourself a favor, and you're going to call Legacy Partners at 586-209-4106. I dig these people. They give you personal, in-person, touch each other, sit over the table, <laughs> have a... Don't say that, what, Charlie. That, that's, yeah, what's touch with your mind? Your mind? What's happened to you? <laughs> You've been locked anybody, up too long. I don't want anybody touching me before no, they're trying to like sell me insurance. No, it's like a handshake, a pad on the back. Well, you make it sound like they're reaching under the table. That's because of your mind. She's going... <laughs> It's She's, a helping hand. She's getting seen now. She's getting close. You might have to call. It's time for Medicare. <laughs> Karen. Right? Don't be tricked because your mind's slipping a little bit by these phony, <laughs> these shysty callers. Look, you get called the same day. When you call, you get called back. You need somebody to come to your domicile. They will be at the table with a friendly pat on the hand. How's that? Okay. Hate right? Shake. It's absolutely free. They're local, you can trust them, and they'll find the best plan for you. Because all this stuff I wasn't even aware of. So I was it's a sitting. lot. It's a lot. Don't hang up the phone if they're calling. Do it the right way. You call my friends over at Legacy Partners, 586-209-4106. And let's do a little Noop no, Noop no Act. Yeah, man, the market, the market, the market. Holy cripe. <laughs> you know, I, I got investments here, I got investments there, you know. One of the ones I had back in New York, I get a call like, "Don't panic, don't panic." They go up, they down. We're go, we're gonna we're gonna make some moves. And I wasn't panicking until they sent me the email. <laughs> and the other reason I don't panic is I got Luke also looking after some of my stash. He knows what I need. He knows. I would just always save my money trying to earn some more and get keep up with inflation. Mm -hmm. That's all I was ever about. Now inflation's going wild. Highest it's been in 40 years. Ever. Now it's ever. So don't guess. Do not gamble with your retirement or your kid's future. Get some personalized care. Everybody we got on this program, we know. Well, I'm not lying to you. Luke Nowacki. I hope this isn't his cell. 248-663-4748. There you go, Luke. Call Luke Nowacki at Pinnacle Well, 248 Four seven four eight, and finally, ADR experienced overseeing more than a quarter billion dollars in public and private construction projects since two thousand one. Inflation, you didn't get your steel contracts over there on that skyscraper. What you gonna do? You need somebody to just manage your stuff because you're the guy in the suit. So you need a guy that's got a suit and work boots, who's honest, ethical, smart. Does it all, all of it, get the job done right, on time, on budget. ADR Consultants, 248-318-9424. As for Barry Ellentuck. I think that's his cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> He'll answer. <laughs> He's fine with it. All right, let's, so let's, get, let's, let's set the table and then get to what we were talking about. Remember, okay. Tudor Dixon, right in the middle of the show, great interview, interesting, I thought, and then read... With Rick Actor bringing you the gun laws you need to know, so you're smart, okay? But you know on the No Bullshit News Hour that we try, Karen, Detroit News columnist, appearing on Tuesdays, I'm on Wednesdays, and we're always here on Fridays, soon to go to two shows a week. Are we? Our, our yeah, our stuff. Okay. <laughs> break that, break that down, Jesus. This is breaking news to you. <laughs> We've been talking about it for months. Breaking news for Karen. I know we have. Yeah, no, Things have been we're difficult, trying. but we're, we're getting right. it going. All right, that's fine. Got to get us out of the lower level. We're going to the penthouse, I going heard. To the shit house. It's, the, it's the fault of COVID yeah. and inflation in the supply chain. Okay, sure. And Putin. And Putin, yeah. Yeah, don't forget Putin. <laughs> Anything but us. Okay, so here, here's the news. A Grand Rapids nursing home is accusing a powerful Michigan attorney of inappropriate and unauthorized invoicing for services for an elderly, brain-damaged woman over whom she holds power of attorney. Tracy Kornack is also the treasurer of the Michigan Democratic Party and her political connections intimidating the nursing home for months. But now the operator is speaking out about what he sees as an elaborate maneuver to improperly bill an insurance company on the woman's behalf. Y'all remember Joe LeBlanc? Yeah. Right? Yeah, remember good the, guy. The nursing home guru. He came, ran came one. He's here. on the board of directors, blowing the whistle. Yeah. Ballsy. Yeah. Okay. This is what 
he told me. He is the chief executive of Heather Hills, the assisted living facility that is home to Cornac's client. He tells me, Cornac used our tax ID number. She used someone else's billing system. She told the insurance company that her hand-picked caregiver was our employee at Heather Hills when she wasn't. Oh, man. Wow. LeBlanc has the documents to support these accusations, and he shared them with me. And I will share this with you. The paper trail, which includes the billings as well as correspondence prepared by the nursing home's lawyer, reveals a complex plan that worked like this. In her capacity as guardian of the elderly brain-damaged woman, Cornack reported to the insurance company that she hired an extra attendant to help with routine care for the woman at a cost of $30 an hour. That attendant, according to a database search, shares the same address as Cornack. Yeah. <laughs> Cornack's own invoices show that she directly sent the bill to the elderly woman's insurance provider, State Farm, and put the cost of the extra care at somewhere around $50,000. Wow. What's more, the documents reveal Cornack told the insurance company that this attendant was an employee of Heather Hills and even used the nursing home's federal employer identification number on the billings. She hired her. The care and treatment logs attached to those invoices were templates that belonged to another health care provider called Best Care, according to Mark Kidder, a lawyer for Heather Hills who prepared the documents. Now, in her letter of explanation to State Farm, because this shit blew up, Cornack wrote, as a result of staffing shortages and the inability of Best Care to fully staff the elderly woman, I obtained these services through her facility, the nursing home, LeBlanc. But LeBlanc and Kidder say it's not true. Heather Hills says it never hired the attendant, never contracted her services, nor did it give Cornack permission to use the facility's tax ID number. Like, why would you do that? Executives from Heather Hills and Best Care say they occasionally saw this attendant in the nursing home, but cannot confirm the level or quality or hours of care she provided since she didn't work for any of them. Now, Kidder writes this. Quote, you did not have any authority to represent to State Farm that Heather Hills provided these services, which it did not. To sink in a minute. This whole design began to unravel last November when State Farm sent a check from an Ohio bank for the amount of $23,401.05 to Heather Hills. Mm -hmm. Now LeBlanc said this to me. I asked Cornack what was the meaning of all this, and she simply said, uh, just cash it. And then she said she'd pay us a little money for the trouble. What? Wow. That and it sounds like a kickback. It sounds. It is. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay, I'm that. just saying. What, 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 what's, what, I'm not, we'll okay. get to it. I know what it sounds like. Not saying it is. I just, I'm fine. That's I'm just not, dumb me. Can't know. An official from State Farm confirmed the check was returned by the nursing home. The home care director for Best Care said the attendant Cornack hired never worked for them either. Now, Cornack did not return several messages requesting comment, nor did she respond to a request for a written explanation from the Heather Hills lawyer. Now, meanwhile, the room and board for the brain damaged woman remains thousands of dollars in arrears, according to LeBlanc. It's taken a long time to come forward, says LeBlanc, as you all know, who's an outspoken critic of the state's COVID-19 nursing home policies. He goes on to say, I'm afraid of the retaliation, obviously. Look at the state of assisted living facilities and how the Whitmer administration covered up things throughout the pandemic. The attorney general never licked into that. So why would I approach the criminal justice system with Dana Nessel at the top? Now, LeBlanc's accusations against Cornack, the state party treasurer, come at a terrible time for Michigan Democrats who are trying to convince the public in this election year that they've done everything politically possible to protect the most vulnerable. <laughs> and these are not the first questions about Cornack's financial conduct. She became the Democratic Party's treasurer in 2019, according to state filings, and according to the Federal Election Commission filings, the Democrats were fined $19,000 last year for failing to itemize contributions, and Cornack was cited as the responsible party. Now, Dana Nessel tweeted in April that she would investigate any 
and all improprieties against seniors and other vulnerable adults. So one wonders if the Attorney General will pursue people with the same zeal who helped with her re-election campaign. And I am hardly a poster boy for the Republican Party. Everybody knows I'm not a Republican. That's why I'm nothing. And to answer that question, I would say no. I don't know about you, Karen. Well, no. I mean, every, you, you say all the time, Charlie, it's not about the party. It's about the people. So I, I don't see you as being aligned or misaligned to any particular party or group. I, I just, I mean, you make that clear all the time. Well, here's what I'll make clear. I blew off Tucker Carlson last night. They saw this is going around. It's quiet. Everybody's quiet. And I said no. Perhaps next week. Because it is within me. Like, look, it's simply a newspaper report, right? You expect something to happen today. So he wanted you to come on and talk about this. Yeah. I'm, okay. like, I'm like, you know what? Give it a couple of days. Mm -hmm. See if they're actually going to fucking do something about it. But Charlie, they haven't said anything for t at least two years that you have repeatedly extended the opportunity and an invitation for them to come on to answer questions and address tons of issues that have arisen over this period of time. And I just, I think it is disrespectful, uh, unprofessional for them to not just, and, and Grace and I were talking about this, they're not denying you, the invitation, they're ignoring the invitation. And, and I think as a public official, that's, that's unacceptable. It's unacceptable. I'll tell you what, I mean, I called Attorney General's office. I haven't gotten anything back. I called the Michigan Democratic Party. They love to chatter. <laughs> Except when, uh-oh, oh, what do, you, what do you do with this? If it looks to be what it is, what do you do with this? Because the treasurer knows where all the bodies are buried. Come on. You know, no, I'm not buying stupid commercials. I will tell you this, a little breaking news. You don't got to do the DDD. I do know the feds are calling around. I know the feds are up on it. I'm glad someone's investigating it. Yep. As They're on should. it. This is it's ridiculous. Um, what we don't need in this town is more blowjob journalism. We don't need Washington Post coming in here, right, and basically spilling your political viewpoint to a profile. We, you know, we, you know, the governor, dude. We got a lot of shit going. Help us! If you're not here to help us, then stay the fuck out of here. It takes some courage. It takes some guts. We don't need Time Magazine saying we're one of the five. What is it? <laughs> one of the top. We are one of the top places, uh, top the world's greatest places in 2022. World's greatest place. But if you read it, Charlie, it's all projected. Now, nobody is going to find a bigger cheerleader for the city of Detroit than me. I love this city. I yes. loved it when it was falling apart. I loved it as people tried to pull it together. I love it in all its imperfections. But I'm a realist. And everything in this article is about what's happening. It says the plans are... Hey, no, read, are read, read it, Ting. Let's oh, you want me to read it? It's short, right? Okay. Well, yeah, relatively. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're going to interrupt as you go through it. Says, it says, that's fine. Nearly 10 years after Detroit filed for bankruptcy, travelers can now play a, play a role in the city's vibrant economic recovery by simply driving through. Oh, driving through. Lock your wait, doors. Wait, wait, driving through. <laughs> wait a minute. There was a drive-by <laughs> on a Jefferson drive yesterday. It's right? a, it's wait a minute. Wait a minute. Three a, shot. <laughs> <laughs> Two dead. Okay, there's a retired cop whose body's decomposing in a, in a park. park. Drive by yeah. and look at that, bro. All right, so hold on. Detroit was recently selected as home of the USA's first electric vehicle charging road. So whoa, whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> the home of the first road that will charge your vehicle as you drive. Where's that at? Doesn't say. So no, where's it at? I don't know. Title. It's not it's here. Again, it's a motor city, but wait a minute. For the modern age, the revitalized city has plans... Plans for lots of new offerings, especially for food and drink. Now, mm. would you ever? Is there outside of going to Europe or going to a foreign country? Is there someplace you would actually go for food and drink? <laughs> okay, I'm just asking. Well, there's plans for this food and drink. There are plans. <laughs> all right, and I'm not going to go through all that because that's just a waste. Okay. But I am going to say there's also uh, a, over 500 new hotel rooms currently in development for lodging. And vacant. Oh, they're in development. They're in development. That's why you should keep driving and sleep in the car. <laughs> but I think your bed's not ready. I just, visitors shouldn't miss the summer opening of phase two of the historic $55 million Motown Museum expansion. I mean, I just, 
There's nothing there. No, it's not. And 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 I understand what and when you when, when, when you talk to people, you know, everybody wants to be part of it. Nobody wants to be a naysayer. I understand that. But let's be realistic. We I live here. I drive through the city every day. I see good. I see bad. I see emerging. I see stalled. Yeah. And I see a facade that's very fragile, socially and economically. You know what? Here, look, I, I've been saying, look, I told you they got to dig up those poison holes. And then there's more news this week that the three asbestos contractors were poisoning us, and they've been banned from doing work for the city for 20 years. Saw that. And nobody was helping with real stuff. You know, the people we love. I'll tell you what's great about Detroit and greater Detroit. I'll tell you what's great about Michigan. I've been all in every state in this union. Mm -hmm. I slept in 48 of them. So I've been around. We got the best people, man. When you're yeah, right, do. when you're right, this is the coolest is. group of people in America. It's probably got to do with being on a peninsula, being frozen. But we are rugged. We are nice. We are tough. We're pretty smart. We're no bullshit type people. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I agree, Charlie. I mean, but that's always what has made Detroit Detroit. And I hate to say it, but with the with 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 all this stuff going on, I feel like that's being lost. I feel like there are efforts to make Detroit into something that it wasn't intended on becoming. Let's 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 yeah, Well, it's not working. It's it's not. I mean, that's, it's not that's what more it's, time. Remember these yeah. idiots at Time magazine bought that house. The house, yeah. Wildly overpaid for it. We're going to do right. all kinds of great journalists yep. and just stole the local shit. Yep. They, they didn't did. do us any good. And then they left. Um but it's I, I don't know. I mean, at at some point everybody should be shaking their heads. I mean, they really should be. So. Yeah. I and I want some answers for these old people. You know, because I'm invested in the old people. Somebody got to be. A lot of us are. I'm not taking it. Yeah, that's not cool. And if this is how your treasurer is behaving, Jesus. And you see how the attorney general just blew it off. Yeah, Because she's allowed to, Charlie. She can ignore you and everybody else will play softball. Well, and then here's the other thing. How come Joe LeBlanc got a lot of balls yeah. and he comes in and he's on the Michigan Center for Assisted Living, the trade group for the nursing homes that aren't federally right. registered, but they're what we call nursing homes. They weren't counting. He has big balls. Then he comes out and he outs this behavior. Does anybody call him? No. Why is Joe being treated like Hunter Biden's laptop? Nobody <laughs> wants to touch it. <laughs> but there's so much there. I demand better. And then bozos that run the legislature up there in Lansing, with their $100 million giveaways to a billionaire, and we have no idea what the design is, no idea what the tax structure is, no idea what the development deal is, and you're giving our money away? Well, I think, too, again, this is an election year, so, you know, there was a, a, a seemingly a record amount of money announced for the schools, but when it boils down, it's, what, just a few hundred dollars more than... Wait, what, yeah, what's... I do that Go with ahead. Tudor Dixon. Okay. Go ahead. We'll wait for oh, that. we spent the most money ever on school kids. We gave them a $450 per pupil bump the most in history. Great. But when you do the math, that's a 5% increase for the school kids. Yep. And inflation's at 10. You fucking cut them. You know what? where I learned math? In Michigan. <laughs> in Michigan. It taught me to... To you mean love like and to Indian? read and to write and or, to add. Or this Michigan. This, which oh, Michigan? no, the state of Michigan. Oh, the yeah. okay, I just want to make yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. okay. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, what's up with that? Can somebody in the business writing world around here get the specificity on this thing? Sure, it's 100 mil. Billionaires don't, don't give their money away. They make money. That's, That's true. Billionaires. Off of everybody else's money. You know what I mean? And by the way, by the way. Planned Parenthood and ACLU, ACLU, we've we, we done business together in the past. Why are you dodging me? Huh? I just want to know what's in this abortion referendum to be enshrined forever in the Michigan Constitution. I, I, I got a few questions. I'm not a hater. Everybody knows my household. We're, we're pro-life. We, we have our babies. And then we're not judging you. You have your choice. I but I want to know what's in it before I put my signature on it, now that you're asking for it. Are they ignoring you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> we, we all deserve calm, focused questions and calm, responsive answers. That's true. This is a big deal. 
for my young woman coming up. So I do my due diligence. It's ridiculous. It's politics stink. Stink. And they're unfair, Charlie. I mean, they're, they're, not, they're not doing, politics is not doing what it's supposed to do. I mean, it's just not. And, and politicians aren't doing what they're supposed to do. I mean, and people are, are suffering as a result, whether they realize it or not. So you get a carrot. Hey, look at this. You know, we're named the big. But what does that do for you on a daily basis, on a day-to-day basis? Nothing. But it makes you feel good. And people don't want to be the naysayers. So, you know, I saw some of the news um, stations interviewing people. They're like, oh, this is great. You know, I'm about... Eh, it has no it has no substance to it. It has absolutely You're no so substance right. to it. You know, and the, for how many years on this program? You know, I'm in the economics. That's what I study. Mm-hmm. And I'm warning you about the money. I'm warning you about the printing of the money. I, I'm warning, all the way back from Bush. And nobody wants to pay attention until it happens. Yeah, but Charlie, people are hurting, and they have to understand. Oh, fuck. Do, do they understand why they're hurting, and do they understand what it's going to take to lessen that pain? I don't think so. Who doesn't like free money? Right. I mean, there's that's, no, there's that's no why, that's such why, right? thing yeah, as free money. Well, yeah. yeah, there is free money if, in fact, you don't need it. Maybe you can get $100 billion or $200 billion and another 60. 60 oh, yeah. So what you're saying is the rich get richer. That's true. The, the poor divide, get poorer. Yeah. People with money make money from people who don't have it. The rich get richer. The poor get kids. Yep, that's true. Well, yeah, they are. That's what they're going to get. <laughs> what else is there to do? That they can't, may not be able to afford yeah. to take care of. Yeah. Did, you see the, did you see the 10-year-old? That had been sexually abused and was pregnant, and they were trying to, like, first of all, how do the 10 year old, I guess kids are maturing sooner, but it's like that's the kind of issue that you're gonna deal with if, in fact, this is overturned and, and people don't support, you know. It's a, here's it's, a great question, okay? It's crazy. Something horrible like that happens to a 10 year old, right? I'm the father, something horrible happened. Does this new thing require the doctor to notify me? Good question. Because I know dentists. I called them. My dentist friend prefers it in writing that I give permission to take out molars. Wow. That's a serious thing. Answer the question. Mm-hmm. How, how wide is this thing? We'll get to that next week. Okay. But everything's politics. And again, what a nice segue. So Tudor Dixon, who is the front runner amongst the Republicans, the primaries next month. Sat down with me at American Coney Island for, you know, a non-rehearsed. I didn't give any questions ahead of time. Lunch. So guess who we have on the program today? Tudor Dixon, who's leading in the polls amongst the Republicans by what, 11% now? Right now, yes. That's pretty good. We are happy, but we are not slowing down. I don't think you can. No, no. All right, you want to just get to it? You, our first politician this season. Okay. You have no experience. You've never held elective office. No, no political experience. Or no political experience. <laughs> never held elective office. You're not a CPA. You've never handled a budget. You don't have a degree in economics. You have a degree in psychology, which is cool. But why would we vote for you beyond the fact that you're not Gretchen Whitmer? So you point out no experience in those areas. Mm-hmm. I would say look at, look at the person that's there. She's had a lot of experience in the political world, but no experience in the business world. So no idea what it meant to shut down places like this, to take away people's livelihoods. Oh, Apparently, during the pandemic. Right. Right. But, but, but even still, it goes beyond that. Because if you talk to businesses across the state, they will tell you that she has created a bureaucracy that attacks business. And, and even there's been this theory that it's like, okay, these are our targets for today. Well, how do you expect to bring more people here, have this be the place, the, the land of opportunity in the middle of the country, if the government goes in and cites people, finds people, constantly tests to see if they're 
uh, if they're abiding by government law. But but that's that's over. No, because nobody's doing the pandemic now because it's political season. No, 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 no. I'm Even not talking about pandemic are, stuff. Oh, you just talking in general. I'm talking about the bureaucracy. If I talk to a, a builder, he says to me, "Listen, when I had Snyder in office, it took me two months to get a permit. Now it's eight months to get a so permit." So why? Because she's put no laws in. Is it the bureaucracy is a bunch of bums? And you're yeah, gonna, you're oh gonna yeah, go up absolutely. There and slap them it's a it's a malicious interpretation of guidance. It's the same guidance. It's a new interpretation. And even our farmers will tell you that they have a new interpretation of the guidance. They told us, we're, we're warning you, you're going to have a new interpretation. So I got one farmer that tells me, I know this this guidance is coming in and it's going to change everything about how we work, but we like want to what? comply. Like what do you mean? Storm water. They're going to come in, they're going to get, it's going to have a stronger guidance for storm water. So we know this. For they rinse said, and wash away into the aquifers and the lake. So they said, we applied for a permit and we said, we'll, we'll comply to this. Ego says, no, it's not good enough. So they go out and they get somebody from California that spent $200,000, two years. This farmer says, I wake up every morning wondering if we're losing the farm. I go to bed every night wondering if I'm going to be able to get the permit the next day. Finally, I said, I'm done with the state. I, I revoked my request for a permit. We will collect the storm water every day and take it to the water treatment facility. And, and she said, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to be able to afford it. I don't know, but so the state I mean, like, will not work with So me. what are you going to do? So you ha so first of all, you change out, I mean, you, you appoint new people, you change the culture, which is something that Snyder was good at coming in. And, I remember Rick Snyder. No, oh, come on. But when you come to the businesses. The get fixed on the Snyder? No. Flink up I'm talking about. What I'm Snyder did. Talking about and I business voted for Snyder environment. once. What he did was he did mega tax cuts for the rich. Blew a hole in the budget, you know, and we had to make up for them, and pensioners have to make up for I'm them. only talking about when it comes to the business environment and getting business done quickly. And that's what, that's one area where he understood that every business is competing, right? So, I mean, Ford Motor Company, Ford Motor Company, they're in a race with Tesla right now. We're in the race with them, or Tennessee's in the race with them. Who do you want to have in the race with them? Because their concern is, we want to build new buildings, and we want to build them now. Tennessee is saying, uh, forget about corporate welfare. Tennessee is saying, we'll help you push those permits. We'll help you break ground. We'll help you. We want to be in business with you in that race. And Michigan's like, maybe in a year. They don't even come here anymore. they just sucking off of us. They're all leeches. Do you believe the big businesses like GM, like Ford, like Stellantis, like Gilbert over here, are sucking the people dry while they don't pay anything? Ford is an example of how we treat business overall. So that's a big example. We lose Ford, we lose GM, we lose Stellantis. You've got companies all over the state that rely on those three companies. And you yep. can say they're sucking off of us, but that's what we build in this state. But do you, so to lose do you our promise to end the corporate tax subsidies and make them stand up as capitalistic firms. Look, what I'm telling you is that was a yes or no. No, what I want to I want to look at what our agreements are with those companies, and I want to see why are they going to other states? Because you're concerned about what we're doing to keep them here. They're leaving. They're doing that and siphoning off of us. So why aren't we looking at that deeply and know. saying exactly. what is, what are we doing? Why are we paying? Why are we paying GM? Six billion dollars to not add any jobs here. High five. I mean, why? I but, mean, but, but GM, she look, said, see, GM put the muscles on the bones, and that was a long time ago. But and she, now I don't know what they're doing. But we want, we want their new factories. Of we, we want, do. To, we want to have job. We want more jobs. We want automotive to stay. But see, we're getting a bait and switch with Whitmer. She's telling us she's bringing jobs in, she and she's moving it. jobs around. No, she said she created twenty five thousand auto jobs. It's three thousand. We less. lost three thousand auto jobs. Everybody knows that. Yes. So I, it's a, it's a, it's as far as I see it, it's just a pass all the way around with government and the media. And nobody's really looking out for us. But look at, so look at so what's, this give me restaurant. one specific thing. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Look this at this. Restaurant. This restaurant. This restaurant. If, American Coney Island. If American Coney Island. The originators. If American Coney Island it. wants to expand in our state, how is the state going to go? Okay, this is going to be a, a number of jobs. We want to help you. We don't help our existing small businesses. Mm -mm. We have. We are over. I got to get this mustard off of the front of your. We we can't 
we can't allow it to be that we only focus on big business and we can't allow existing businesses to go by the wayside. But we also need to create an environment first and foremost to bring people here. Yeah, because we're leaving. We're, we're, we're losing we're, people. Now, speaking of losing people. All of people, these things get better if we have more people. Speaking of losing people, watch this pivot. It's important. I, I did a little research in my underpants this morning. Try the dog. Not, you are pro-life, but here's how it shakes out. With the overturning of Roe v. Wade, 58% of Michigan voters are opposed to it. 52% strongly oppose it. 68% of independent voters, which is going to deliver you the state house or not, oppose the decision. 63% of women oppose the decision. 86% say it's important, right? And 58% that it's very important to them. So you are... Where's the number of how many, what percentage gets driven to vote on just that single issue? Well, I would say it says, according to the latest poll, 86% it's an important and 58% say it's very. Now you are on record as saying pro-life, no exceptions. If they asked you rape, incest, or the health of the mother, you said no exceptions. Do you health stand of the mother and life of the mother are different. Okay, well, you know, uh, that's true. Yes. All right. The mental health, I think, is a, you're to torturing it, and they're not being honest about it. But rape, incest, no exceptions except... Life and the mother. Is that... You're solid there. That's where I'm solid. Okay. Do you think you can win with that? I, like I said, I think if you look at the numbers, you just the news just put out numbers. They said it brings out 36% of Republicans, 36% of Democrats. What we really think is that they don't believe that we should have dismemberment abortion. They don't believe that we should have abortion on demand, abortion up to the moment of birth, all of those things. If you look at what the Democrats want, that's not attractive, but that's what's on the ballot. So who does that bring out? And when are we going to say to Whitmer, you really think that this is going to bring out your voters? I mean, they think that's the winning issue, but most Americans do not believe in this third trimester abortion, up partial birth abortion, ripping babies apart and pulling them out of the mother, that kind of stuff, that's on the ballot. So right now, a, a constitutional amendment, don't, for, well, and, well, that's, but it, that's changes, true. it changes all our laws that's in true, Michigan. But the question would be like, a 14 year old who, let's say, is a victim of abuse by an uncle. Yeah, you, you're, you're perfect saying, example. You're saying carry that. Do you, okay. Yes or no. But I will listen to but yes or no and then give me the answer. Because I know people who are the product. I, I, life is a life for me. That's how it is. Okay. That is for me. That's my feeling. That's that's fair. You heard it. No, no exception except the health of the mother. Okay, we'll, we'll take a break there. And a word from David Hall Financial. Hi, I'm David Hall from Hall Financial. Choosing between a 15 or 30 year mortgage can be difficult which is why we offer the Modern Mortgage, a flexible term that's customized for you. 866-CALL-HALL or chat with us online at callhallfirst.com. American Coney Island, so good even Al Roker from the Today Show eats here. Not like that other guy, Al Joker, who eats at Lafayette. So make sure you're a roker and not a joker. American Coney Island. Look at that, Detroit's finest, right there. Ho, ho. Respect to uh, Officer Quartz who lost his life last week. Um, okay. I said you don't have any budgetary experience, but let's let's go over this budget, okay? The current Whitmer budget is seventy-six billion dollars. Do you know what it was? Her first budget. Fifty-six. You're the only candidate that I've talked to that I asked the question that even knows the number of the budget. So that's a 30% increase. Yeah. They say unexpected revenue increases. Well, first of all, one, that's fake Biden money. And two, it's sales tax revenue in an era with 10% inflation. So, of course, you're going to collect more sales tax because everything's 10% more. But here's what they're, they're pushing. This is the media. They're in the trick bag. I mean, you kind of are, are the media, so. I know, but I'm not in the trick okay, bag. Right. 
So now they're parading, oh, we have a new record for per pupil funding for the schools, $9,200. Yeah. Last year it was $8,700, so we gave the kids 500 more. But to keep up with inflation, we'd have to give them 1,000 more, so the kids actually took a $500 cut while we're giving a billion dollars in pork away. Give me your education platform. Well, Is that have... outrageous, first of all? That's outrageous. It's right there. It's it's right there in pencil. The problem right is, there. is this one-time money that we won't be able to continue. So the problem is, do we have? Can we sustain that? And that has to be where we look at where do we have waste? Where do we have waste in government right now? And Ask me. Where do we have waste? Well, the Department of Health and Human Services fully controls one third of the budget. It's about twenty-five billski. We saw through the pandemic how well they do. I would look in there. I think you can find road money in there. I think you can find school money in there. So for me, for schools right now, you see where we are with schools. You see that we just had 50% of our kids fail their literacy exams, but in this area, it's nearly 90%. This is a serious problem. So we can keep flooding this problem with money, but what is the root cause of the problem? Because unless you have the root cause of the problem, you don't have a solution. And it's the, and the parents? Nothing changed with parents. So Something did to... change with parents, though, and that for the better. So we suddenly have the engagement of parents in a way we never have. There you go. So this is amazing. And this is the opportunity that I think the state has. Because we've fallen so far behind, because we're 38 in the nation, and because we're on track to be in the bottom five in the nation come 2030, we now have the attention of parents. So the Detroit News just went out and talked to parents and said, where do you think we stand? And a lot of them said, ah, 26, 27. So we have their attention. They think we're in a better place than we are. We can talk to them about that and say, this is the time for us to allow choice, to allow choice in education so there's no wrong path. Charter because schools? Our charter schools aren't being treated fairly either. They, I mean, they, that, they that, that per pupil well. cost doesn't go to the char per charter school. Well, now, of course, I move my kid around. I can't take the money. That's It's an it's a issue with me. But in this town, you can. And they're not performing any better. I suspect what has changed is, you know, when we're testing, you know, Common Core is not a bad thing. It, the Common Core understanding of things. We keep changing the tests, what we're teaching, the, you know, you know what, what I'm saying? What if we just wanted to know if kids could read? Right. That's, that's, that's a key that's measurement. Core. That's Common Core. So basically, you, education's a thing of yours. Yes. And yes. school of choice. And school choice, yes, and also transparency. I mean, we should have transparency in all areas. This is a governor who ran on transparency, right? But the government hasn't been transparent, but our schools aren't transparent. So parents go and they say, oh, here, we want this information, and they're charged for the information to just find out what's happening in their own child's classroom. Oh, so, so now that. they're bitching about it? You know, all of a sudden, like, where, where was everybody three years ago? Come on. This is opportunity. This is opportunity. It we is have parents involved. It's an opportunity to have the parents involved. Yes. Nursing homes. An unmitigated disaster. If elected, if you even get the nomination, if you're on the dais with Whitmer, is, will you hold her responsible for ignoring them? And I am, of course, a complete independent. I think I even, I did. I voted for Whitmer the first time. And I'm very disappointed. I feel like this is a true confession. Okay. I voted for Snyder. I voted for Reagan. I voted for Obama. I'm that guy. You need me. Yeah, I do. Okay. That. Make a note of that clip. Like that <laughs> one. Clip. Um, what a, do you promise to get to the bottom of this and to improve end of life care? Yes, because I already told you that I'm pro life. Life, no, no exceptions on life, even when you are end of life. And I had this situation with my grandmother. We have a chance now to improve end of life care. We just saw how awful it is that these places, many of them are no better than a cattle pen. That what we could have learned could improve things for me, you, my cameraman, who he looks like he's halfway dead anyway. But we also have a problem. These, it's really hard to get the, the nursing care. It's really hard. Yes. We don't have any, that all of these problems are solved, many of these problems are solved with more people. Bringing, having a, a state where people want to live, work, and play. Bring people here. Because if you run one of these nursing homes, you have to have 24-hour care. It's not like you can just shut down at a certain time. You have to have people there all uh, the yeah, time. Yeah, but, but more specifically, like with Fauci running around, where was the holistic 
focus and attack on improving these facilities. Well, we wait a minute, to, wait we, a minute. When have you ever seen a federal government act the way or the state Biden government, federal or government or the county government or the city government? We had our federal government pull this socialized medicine move without us even voting on it. So they all of a sudden confiscate antibodies. Oh, we're in charge of this now. Have you ever seen the federal government take charge of a medication and say, the doctors don't know when it's right to give it to you. We'll decide when the state gets it. I got it. That's that. How about like, would you take some of this COVID Biden bucks that we got stashed in a bank account, billions, would you give it to these facilities to improve their HVAC system that would circulate and clean air, something basic and tangible? We, I want to have reports from everybody, say understanding exactly where we stand. So you would put a, you would put a commission elderly. together to make recommendations. I think that we need to know exactly where these facilities stand. So if that's stand. the way to but, do. How would we do but that? But something we need to remember is some of oh, these. No, they're watching, going. She's she's saying, but she's not offering concrete. Concrete. No. What do we do? Look, I'm saying we already knew some of these facilities were in really bad shape. Yes. So we have that. We already have the data to show of the 21 the facilities she one? used, we had 10 that were below Fatal. a five. And they, and they failed inspections during COVID. Yes. So what do we do? So that's where I think we need to step. That's that's where when you say the health department is screwed up, well, there is a purpose for the health department to make sure people are safe. Okay. You have to make sure people are safe. So where did the health department fail? How do we go back and look at where that failure happened? So you're saying, like, let me get in office and take a look before I throw out some bullshit to you. I don't want to lie to you. Okay. All right, good. Now, because this is the, the end, you mentioned DeSantis. I wrote this because it's important. I've been watching it. You got to this point as the front runner, like basically on your own, shoe leather, hard work, chicken dinners. Now, coming out of nowhere, really. You did get a little help from the incompetent campaigns of James Craig and Perry Johnson. I mean, fortune works too. But all Everybody this time. Everybody says a little luck is important. <laughs> all this time, you've been working hard for Trump's endorsement. And now that you're ahead, and now that money. Establishment money, regular people money is lining up. Do you even need this guy's endorsement? And do you even want it at this point? We have a Republican Party who is looking to this president to see where we should go still. I mean, 83%, I think it's that they believe in, in his methods and his policies. Why? Because look at the gas prices today compared to when... President Trump was in office. I get the whole, like, oh, do you want this guy involved? We were all so much better off when this guy was involved. So do you want his endorsement? Yes. He made you work hard. He didn't give it to you. I've worked hard for everything in life. I yeah. should work hard. Okay. You better not just be So you'll take it. But now, if you got to move look, center, look, look, do you look, even look. need it? Wait, how? You've seen other candidates that were just handed things. Yeah. They don't, I mean, it's, that's not right. That's not how it works. I, to be honest, I've never done this before, right? right? So I get involved in this and I'm like, this is, it is a brutal process to go through, especially when you're not known, to prove yourself over and over again. It's a process that's meant to happen because you're going in there for a job that is really darn hard. And you better be able to show people that you have worked for it, you deserve it, and you will serve them well. Okay, we're watching. Oh, was the election stolen? Look, come on, just answer it. Come on, how do was you it? have a Secretary of State that was she it? broke the law? I, oh, she, she, well, she did. So Courts she, ruled. So, so she sure tried. The, the voter rolls stink, but was there mass fraud? There was fraud. We, was there mass fraud? Was the election stolen? Does it have to be? Does it have to be mass fraud, or could it have just been in the Democrat areas? Well, it's where we had twelve million dollars secretly well, spread the, out. Well, the, the, all that happened, but do you think like one hundred fifty thousand fake votes came into Cobo? I don't have enough information to let you know. So, okay. But I sure as heck so will make sure the next one's not So that's, that's that's good because you're like, yeah, they didn't do their job well. There's fraud. There's always fraud. You know what? We the, can't trust The mules them. have been going on since Abraham Lincoln. But you didn't say it was stolen. That's how you walk the tightrope. I just said it to her. She's smiling. It's a good answer. I wish you all the best. Thank you, Tudor Dixon, Republican nominee for the uh, Republican nominees for Governor of Michigan. And I would like to say, see that Governor Whitmer right there, anytime. Don't buy good dogs, right? Uh, wonderful.
Absolutely. Got to answer to the people. Really, thank you. Thank you for being here. <laughs> thank you. And I'll throw it back to you, Charlie, in the studio. <laughs> That was good, Charlie. Thank you, Charlie. Is you, hand, well you, done. Hand, you handled that very well. What's that? No help. You that, did that very well. Oh, don't, <laughs> little inside. Don't help me. Well, way to stay on her um, to make her answer a question because they don't do that to politicians enough. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I, mean, reg- I mean, you just want a, a question answered. All I want. But she came, though. You, sure, well, that's regardless huge Regardless of whether or not she did well, whether you like her, whether it's... She came. I mean, so she has to be given some credit for that because she's done something that tons of sitting officials have not done. That's true. So. Mm-hmm. And I'll say this. I mean, I'm respectful. It was nice. Mm-hmm. It was fun. But there, there was no soft soap in there. Answer it. Yeah. You all decide so, I mean, yeah. what you just saw, if she answered, if she's giving you what you need. But I would say this, she's confident, she knows what she's talking about in general. I mean, and nobody's giving you anything specific. Right. Well, again, like I said, I just, whether you, your job, you're doing what you're supposed to do, and that's bring people to the table and ask them questions so listeners can determine whether or not they're interested in support. You know, you're not saying do this, support her, don't support her. You're saying, hey, here's a candidate. These are the questions. Here are her answers. You know, we're not telling you what to think. We're just suggesting that you do. And I didn't hear, let me let me put this basically. I didn't hear lies. I didn't hear bullshit. Like, I'm pro-life. That's the deal. That's whether it costs her or not. That's the deal. I'm not switching up. I'm not, I'm not going to start changing what I'm saying, right? And uh, there was one at the end. Oh, Trump. The Trump, the right. Trump yeah, like, she, she didn't say it was stolen. She was a lot of fraud. There is a lot of fraud always in elections. Right. But But was there mass fraud? She didn't go there. But it's the integrity of the process. And we talk about that all the time. But integrity of the process and fraud are two different things. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, in terms of an election being stolen. But, you know, like I said, like her or not, she came. And and to me, that that speaks volumes because she's done what so many others have not done. That's cool. Not good enough for me. Just no, showing not. up, not but good enough for me. That's a start, though, Charlie. I mean, Answer somebody, some somebody just commented that, you know, you're a tough person to sit on the other side of the table from from an interview perspective. So a lot of people are apprehensive. I mean, people recognize that you're not going to, you're not going to let the person hand you five questions that they're willing to answer. People know that. And because of that, they stay away. That That's that's not an excuse to, to not participate. But if you answer the question, you're truthful. It's not that hard. <laughs> to me even if you don't know <laughs> I, well that's come from from doing work you know what i mean sure like over and and, and trying to find yourself of what you believe in what what you're going to do that's okay true. so what i think what i got there was i'm pro-life pro-trump pre, pre, pro-trump don't really believe it was stolen but we got to clean up some stuff um i don't know if the business plan's tight at all you know we got to you know cut red tape and stuff mm-hmm. like that and uh Anything else? Amazing willpower, because she sat there with that Coney dog and didn't even touch it. No, she did. Did she did it after? Okay. No, during commercial break. Okay, good. Yeah, I didn't want her to see her. It, you know, this isn't uh, mukbang. No, but I'm fat, so I don't know how you sit there with a Coney dog. I keep dog telling you guys, mukbang, no, we're not doing that. So I don't want to watch her eat during an interview, <laughs> spitting food on the mic. No, we're not doing that. Only you, Mark, in your <laughs> corner. We are. Too, huh? We're just having lunch, Karen. Yeah. How many times do I call you like I'm at a lunch meeting? Do you not eat? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to eat and talk. I don't like to talk to people when they're chewing. That is disgusting. So, no. Let her talk, and then she can eat. Not at the same time. Look at that. <laughs> Queen of the scene. There you go, Ms. Dixon. That's free political <laughs> advice from someone who's been in the fires. Oh, boy. Now, afterwards, we got this idea. Like I said, it's the old gotcha type of media now. Like, where you at on guns, et cetera, et cetera. And she's got a new campaign campaign manager he's out of florida he's got the you know the the brown shoes and the brown belt and mm. you know the shaved head very nice tan he's a very nice man what's his name trevor or tracy or trevor something like that a nice guy but they didn't really know what michigan's mm-hmm. gun laws are so we put red on it and red went and saw rick Hector of uh legally armed in detroit who's you know this end of the month is having free lessons for Ladies out there, register at uh, Facebook.com, Michigan CCW. Get, you know, you should go, ladies. Get educated. Yeah, for sure. The guy's really sophisticated. And so I, 
Well, I asked Red to do something else, but this is what we got. It's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty so we came to give a couple what we want to say uh, Michigan gun laws for dummy type tutorial today with some quick questions about gun laws that people really don't understand. Okay. So, Rick, let's get right into it. Okay, how, how old do you have to be to purchase a handgun from a licensed dealer in the state of Michigan? A handgun from a licensed dealer, you would need to be 21 years of age. Is there a background check? Yes, there's a background check at the gun shop when you purchase a firearm. How long do you have to be to buy a long rifle from a licensed dealer in the state of Michigan? From a licensed dealer, you can buy a long gun, that is a shotgun or a rifle, at 18 years of age. Okay, so how old do you have to be to buy a person-to-person? -person? Say, if I wanted to sell you my gun. If you're 18 years of age and you're buying a handgun from a private seller, you can be 18 years of age and purchase that firearm. Now, is there a background check involved in that as well? Well, yes. When you're buying it during a private transaction for a handgun, you would need to get the, a pistol purchase permit from your local prevailing law enforcement agency. For example, if a person in Detroit wanted to buy a gun through a private sale, they would have to go to the Detroit Police Department and get a pistol purchase permit. And that's where the police department runs a background check. And can a person, how old do you have to be to make a person-to-person -person purchase of a long rifle? Well, a long rifle, you would need to be 18 years of age. And is there a background check involved in that, too? There is not a official background check on a private transaction of a long gun. Can you sell your gun to a crazy person? No, it's against the law to sell it to a crazy person. And it's criminal and illegal. But you know what they say about criminals. They do what criminals do. Can you own a gun if you're a crazy person? If you're a crazy person, I would hope that you would not have a gun, but crazy people are crazy. That's right. So now, is there anything that would replace the background check? Like, say, for instance, if you have a carry concealed pistol license, does that pretty much count as a background check? Yes, many uh, gun ranges, establishments, many gun shops, they will look at and say, that, hey, you have a valid concealed pistol license, and some places will use that as your background check. And generally, how long does a CPL license stand in the state of Michigan? A CPL is valid for as long as five years. So it sounds like to me the only real gun law or loophole that we have here in Michigan, which a lot of people don't know, we are ranked 19th is the most restrictive gun laws in the country. But the real only loophole we really have is if they buy, 18-year-old buys a long, long gun from another person, there's no background check. Oh, well, that's the one uh, concern that some people have. So there you have it, Michigan Gun Laws for Dummies 101. Basically, it ain't too much more we can do because, like I said, we're 19th on the list of the most restrictive gun laws in the country. This is your boy, Comedian Detroit Red, with Rick Ector, NBN News. Deuces! Oh, yeah, no, man, I said cut that part. When, when Red was editorializing, oh, there's not yeah. much more we can do. Oh. Well. It all depends where you're at on the issue, but there's a lot you could do, mm. right? You could close the 18-year-old person to person. That's you, true. You could not allow 18-year-olds to even buy them legally. It'll all be 21. But you criminals don't buy guns legally. Yeah, but I'm just, yeah, let's yeah, just I do the law it. before okay. we, everybody starts buying. I thought that was a nice public service. It was. It was very good. Now you all know something. Yeah. Somebody, Betty Nelson said this is some great information. It's here. great so information. People do, and I think that information matters. People have to know, you know, what we can do and what we can't do. So, yeah, Rick knows his stuff. I like his sweatshirt. I'm going to have to get one of those. It's, it's, it's a great country where we all like get to voice an opinion and have a vote. Yes. Right? So That's true. So there's plenty we can do. I mean, people want to ban semi-automatic rifles. Uh, we've done that before. We did. So there's a just to say that, but it was quite good. It was very good, actually. Yeah, it was very good. I wonder. I, I was. I wanted to see how uh, Red did on the at the range. You didn't see it. There was that one was, shot. Yeah, he kept going for the head. He was uh, yeah, missing he everything. Have, he, didn't any, he didn't have any body <laughs> shots. <laughs> Rhode Island Red, you're going nuts. <laughs> <laughs> center mass, Red. Center mass. Yeah, that's well, that's right. what we got. We'll we'll stay on it. Uh, it great, great being with you again Karen. Thank you Charlie and Mark and Jesus and Grace. Thank you for the goodies. <laughs> I appreciate it. Yeah, and all you out there. You too, Drew.